Hello and welcome to my video on how to shape and score a batard. To start, you're going to sprinkle some flour liberally on your counter. As you can see, my dough has finished its bulk fermentation. You can see the fermentation bubbles through the glass and it is nice and jiggly and full of air. I like to flour my fingertips so it's um, easier to coax the dough out of the bowl. Now begin gently stretching the dough out into a general square shape. Once that is done, you're going to take the bottom part of your dough and fold it up and into the middle. Then you're going to take the top of your dough and begin folding it up and over the middle line. As you can see, I'm kind of pulling some tension into it as I do this, and so the dough is getting uh, tighter on the outsides. Next, turn your dough 90 degrees and just pop out any um, major bubbles that are sticking out and begin rolling the dough on top of itself, pulling towards you as you do this. The tackiness of the dough being pulled along the counter will make it even tighter on top. As you're doing this, some bubbles may pop out the sides. Just pinch them closed, just like that, and just continue to tighten up the surface by pulling it towards you. Once that's done, I take my bench scraper and I give it a quick shove under the dough to seal the dough a little more underneath. If you don't have a bench scraper, don't worry about it. You can use your hand still. Then pick it up and place it in your banneton. Mine is covered in uh, rice flour, which is like Teflon for uh, wet doughs. Anyway, you're going to start pinching out the uh, bubbles, uh, any bubbles that have been created by your shaping. Um, and then you're going to start stitching up the dough. You're just pulling uh, parts of the dough from the side and pulling it into the middle. And this is going to cause even more surface tension for your dough, which is going to help with your oven spring. Once you're done that, I'm just uh, pinching in the middle and sides here so it's uh, nice and sealed together. Let's just watch as I uh, obsess over this a little more. Okay, so once you're done obsessing, you're going to take some flour and you're going to sprinkle it on top of the dough because it's still quite wet on top. I'm sprinkling some down the sides as well just so my dough does not stick to the sides after it comes out of um, the fridge. Next you're going to cover the dough with a clean tea towel. This is to soak up any moisture that will be forming while it's fermenting in the fridge. Then just uh, put it in a plastic bag or cover it with a shower cap like me and then put it in the fridge for its cold ferment. Okay my bread has been in the fridge for about four hours. I don't keep mine in the fridge very long as I prefer my bread mild. However long it's been fermenting, you're going to turn your dough out onto a piece of parchment paper. Then you're just going to gently brush off any excess flour. If your dough hasn't been in the fridge for very long, like mine, you're going to want to work quickly as you want the dough nice and cold when it hits that hot oven. Now take your blade or a knife, whatever you have, and you are going to create a score mark from end to end. You're gonna go about a quarter inch deep. We create this score to tell our dough where to open up in the oven. If we did not do this, it would just burst open wherever it wanted. If you also want to do some designs, you can create little superficial score marks in the dough and create a wheat stalk or a flower or something. My Dutch oven has been heating up in a 500 degree Fahrenheit oven for an hour and is ready for my dough. You can see my score mark is starting to spread. This is just because my dough is warming up. Next, pick up your dough using the sides of the parchment paper and lower it very carefully into your screaming hot Dutch oven. Then put the lid on and place it in the 500 degree Fahrenheit oven for 20 minutes. And 20 minutes later, remove the lid of your Dutch oven. You can see we have some great oven spring. It has opened beautifully at our score line 
and we even have a little ear. Now place it back into the oven at 450 degrees Fahrenheit with the lid off for another 25 minutes. And 25 minutes later, here is the result. I'm sorry I can't show you the crumb in this one as I gifted this uh, bread to my neighbor. However, I will show you in another one. I hope you found this video helpful. For the detailed recipe and method in making this bread, click on one of the links provided. There is also a link to the quick version of the same video. And thanks for watching.